Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. OL Notes, Broncos, Wattenberg, Raiders, Cowboys, BB, Patriots, Giants, Neal. The center position sticks out on Denver's offensive line. Four eight-figure-per-year contracts populate the Broncos' front, giving Bo Nix a solid batch of blockers as he begins his career. But the team did not bring in a starter-caliber player to replace Lloyd Cushenberry, who signed a big-ticket deal with the Titans. A matchup of recent day three picks in training camp is close to being resolved. Luke Wattenberg has started Denver's two preseason games, and the coaching staff views the 2022 fifth-rounder as having made great strides ahead of his third season. Wattenberg should be considered the favorite to start over 2023 seventh-rounder Alex Forsyth, despite the latter having been Knicks' 2022 center at Oregon, per the Denver Gazette's Chris Tomasson. A Washington alum already going into his age 27 season, Wattenberg has two seasons left on his rookie contract. He has played 128 career snaps. This will be an adjustment for the Broncos, who used Cushenberry as a starter for four seasons. But Wattenberg's fifth-round contract will mesh well on a line with Garrett Bowles, Ben Powers, Mike McGlinchey, and now Quinn Mainers on pricey deals. Here is the latest from the O-line ranks. The Patriots will of course look into additions on the waiver wire, when hundreds of cut players will be available come Wednesday, but de facto GM Elliot Wolf said, via MassLive.com's Karen Gurigian, the team is content with its current mix-up front. In addition to being without left guard Cole Strange, the Pats have not named their starting tackles. It appears to be trending toward 2023 late-August trade pickup Vidirian Lowe at LT and Street FA edition Chukwuma Okorafor at RT, the Boston Herald's Doug Kide writes. Jared Mayo both said he had wanted an O-line settled before the third preseason game and that Drake May's short outing in the preseason opener came from an uneasiness about the front five. This does not paint a picture of stability entering the season, which would make it rather interesting if Mayo and Wolf opted to open the year with May starting. Cooper Beebe had been mentioned as a strong candidate to replace Tyler Biadas as the Cowboys' center, but Brock Hoffman, a 2022 UDFA who started two games last season, had worked exclusively in that spot during most of training camp. Beebe, however, has received first-team work recently, Saad Yousself of The Athletic Notes, subscription required. Since that insertion, Bibi looks to be moving toward landing the gig. The third-round rookie appears the more likely starter, Yousef adds, with Hoffman, despite his weeks-long run with the first unit, seemingly ticketed for a backup role. After a shoulder injury kept Jackson Powers Johnson out of OTAs, and a concussion sustained at minicamp sidelined the second-round pick for months. Powers Johnson only returned to Raiders practice recently. The team had hoped the Oregon Center would win its LG job from the jump, but the time off will likely delay his start to the season. Antonio Pierce said, via the Athletics' Tash and Reed, Powers Johnson is unlikely for Week 1. Free agent signing Cody Whitehair has worked as Las Vegas starting LG and is poised to keep that role to open the season. The Bears demoted the longtime starter midway through last season, making his Raiders fit, with ex-Bears OC Luke Getze calling the shots, interesting. But the 32-year-old blocker looks like a week one starter. Cowboys HC Mike McCarthy instantly derails Trey Lance hype train. It's trending more and more likely that Dak Prescott will play out the 2024 season on the final year of his contract. Until Prescott inks a new deal, there will be a path to Trey Lance, becoming the Dallas Cowboys' starting quarterback. To say that Lance has a long way to go before the Cowboys ever consider him as Prescott's successor would be an understatement. After a rough preseason debut, Lance looked more comfortable last week against the Raiders. But that isn't saying much. It has long made sense in fans' eyes that the Cowboys should attempt to trade Lance before he, presumably, seeks greener pastures as a free agent next March. As it turns out, a Lance trade won't be happening after Jerry Jones confirmed the 24-year-old will make Dallas 53-man roster. While notable, 
that doesn't necessarily mean he'll back up Prescott. Lance still has a lot to prove and Mike McCarthy reinforced that on two accounts on Wednesday. McCarthy was asked if he's going to have a difficult decision picking between Lance and Cooper Rush for the backup job. McCarthy gave a typical coach-speak answer, but the fact he didn't commit to Lance speaks volumes. I think just like anything, you play this all the way out, said McCarthy, via John Machoda of The Athletic. You can never have enough good quarterbacks, and we got three good ones. We're fortunate. It wouldn't make much sense for McCarthy to name the winner before Saturday's preseason finale. Many Cowboys fans have written Rush off the roster due to Lance's upside. However, Rush has kept the proverbial ship afloat, and then some, whenever Prescott has missed time with injury. During the presser, McCarthy stated that two players are having their best training camps as Cowboys, right tackle Terrence Steele and QB Cooper Rush, per ESPN's Todd Archer. McCarthy applauded Rush's ability to lead the offense to points during two-minute drills. And thus, the Lance hype train has come to a screeching halt. The former third overall pick had some wind in his sails following Saturday's win and Jones' announcement. While Jones confirming Lance's roster spot was seen as a big endorsement, it was the expected outcome. Trading Lance sounded ideal in theory, but it was always going to be difficult given how little football he's played in the last two years, even in light of J.J. McCarthy's season-ending injury and amid other QB uncertainty around the league. Cutting Lance wasn't an option, either. While Dallas declined Lance's fifth-year option, their investment of a fourth-round pick coupled with his $5.31 million guaranteed salary suggested from the onset that he was going to make the team. Furthermore, it would be foolish of any team to not carry three quarterbacks with the NFL's emergency third quarterback rule. It may seem like McCarthy reigned on Lance's parade, but there wasn't really anything to celebrate to begin with. The head coach has long stated Lance needs more reps two preseason games hasn't changed that. Dan Orlovsky warns Cowboys about C.D. Lamb's absence. We're just a little over two weeks from the start of the 2024 NFL season, and C.D. Lamb has yet to report to training camp. The Dallas Cowboys have been unwilling to get a deal done with their best offensive player. Their offseason has been quite shaky, to say the least, and this might be the last nail in their coffin. Talking on ESPN's Get Up, former NFL QB Dan Orlovsky called them out for actively sabotaging themselves. He claimed that they did that from the very next day after they got beat by the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs by a first-year starter with a bunch of unknown receivers. Orlovsky pointed out that Lamb accounted for 13 targets a game in the final three months of the season, which translated to 35% of their passing snaps. Moreover, Lamb had close to 1,000 receiving yards more than Jake Ferguson, the second-leading receiver in Dallas last season. Orlovsky stated that, just like the Dallas Mavericks would be nothing without Luka Donich, the same would apply to the Cowboys. Jerry Jones has turned the Cowboys into the most valuable sports franchise on earth, but he's also leading them right to the cliff, football-wise. No one takes this team seriously anymore, and his mind games are only infuriating the few stars they have. This could be the beginning of the end of this team's chances of competing for a very, very long time, and it's hard to understand why Jones would sabotage his team just for the sake of it, other than just ego. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of C.D. Lamb? Leave your opinion in the comments.